Well, the timing of President Trump's address tonight can make it one of the most unique speeches, as Nancy Cord has mentioned, in presidential history. So how will it compare to others in the past? And how will it shape President Trump's legacy? For more on this, I want to bring in Senate historian emeritus Don Ritchie. He joins us now from Washington. So, Don, with the, this impeachment trial expected to wrap tomorrow, how exactly do you think the State of the Union will have its place in history? Oh, State of the Union addresses are important uh, for finding out what a president has in mind at the time to sort of set up a, a laundry list of things he'd like to see Congress do. And, and of course, he'll be judged by how much Congress actually does give him in the long run. And uh, these are historic speeches going back to George Washington. On the whole, they're not the most memorable speeches. They're not as as uh, oratorical as inaugural addresses. In fact, it's very hard, going back through history, to come up with very many lines that uh, have gotten into the history books. So how would you say, when you look at President Trump's State of the Union speeches, how do they differ from previous presidents? And how has he—are there any traditions the president may have broken? Well, you know, all presidents take credit for anything good that's happened <laughs> during the previous year. Uh, and, and if something uh, not so good has happened, they encourage people to, to work harder to uh, go over those, those hurdles that they've had. Uh, President Trump perhaps has beaten his chest a little more vigorously than many other presidents have. But essentially, they're all out there trying to promote their administration and to encourage Congress to listen think, uh, seriously to what it is they want to see done. Back in the days when Congress didn't have standing committees, they used to take the president's State of the Union message and actually cut it up paragraph by paragraph and create special committees to try to address whatever those issues are. Uh, we don't need to do that now. All this is going to be sent off to the standing committees. But clearly, there's a lot on the agenda that the president wants to get the, the public to pay attention to, and he wants to get Congress to try to enact. Is there any president from the past that you can compare to who might be in, in somewhat of a similar or, or comparable situation as Mr. Trump, given the facts of what he's facing, the State of the Union playing out on such a historic day as well? Well, uh, 20 years ago, President Bill Clinton was being impeached. And uh, there was a lot of speculation that he would not come up to deliver his State of the Union message. He could have just sent it up in writing. Many presidents had done that in the past, all through the 19th century. And they thought, well, he'd be too embarrassed to come up. Instead, Clinton came up. He gave a speech. Uh, he totally ignored the uh, impeachment process. I think he surprised the senators and the representatives, and I think he took the steam out of the impeachment process. At that stage, it wasn't quite as much of a foregone conclusion as the, the current process. But even so, uh, people really were surprised that the president could go about his business without even referring to it. What do you think the president needs to say tonight in his address? Well, every president wants to bring the country together. There's a lot of talk about unity in all of the, the State of the Union messages, that these are problems that aren't political problems, they're national problems, they're not Republican or Democratic problems, the solutions should include everyone. They all say that. Uh, at the same time, uh, they're clearly uh, talking to their own side of the aisle. And in fact, you'll notice that only about half the House will stand up to applaud mm -hmm. at various lines that the president makes. The other half will sit very stony at that stage. Uh, and so they, they, they are trying to get above and beyond the, uh, the usual uh, politics. But it, it's uh, contradictory to be tweeting uh, insults to members of Congress at the same time you're hoping to get them to come together. And we know the person tonight who will be delivering the Democratic response is Senator Bernie Sanders. In previous election years, have any other White House candidates directly responded to the president's State of the Union? Not in the election years of, uh, about to run themselves, but certainly people who are being groomed by their parties. Uh, Marco Rubio, for instance, gave one of the uh, uh, responses. And, the uh, infamous he, water, we remember. Yes. <laughs> but uh, it, these are really thankless jobs, actually, to respond to the State of the Union message largely because uh, the, the audience doesn't pay as much attention to them as they do to the president. Uh, and people will narrow in on some flub or some mistake or something that was done that, that didn't appeal to the, to the crowd. It actually has not helped the careers of most of the people who have given them in the past. I hope somebody had mentioned that to Bernie Sanders. Now is not a time for that advice, probably for him personally, uh, <laughs> counting on that type of advice. I do want to ask you before you go, besides streaming on a platform like CBSN, how has technology expanded the State of the Union audience? 
Oh, it's quite enormous. Of course, originally, presidents wrote out very long speeches, and they went out to newspapers to print. One of the big problems was the newspapers sometimes got them before the Senate got them or the House got them, and that created some, uh, some difficulties. Oh, then we went to presidents, uh, starting with Coolidge, who were speaking on the radio, presidents starting with Truman, who were speaking on television. Uh, now, uh, since 2002, we've had webcasts. We're streaming around the world. It's enor the audience has become enormous. And it's one of the few instances where everybody in the government comes together, the, the executive branch, the legislative branch, the judicial branch, the diplomatic corps. Uh, except for inaugurations and state funerals, there is really nothing like a State of the Union message to bring the government together. So everybody's going to be paying attention. You certainly will. Don Ritchie, thank you very much. My pleasure.